We have two amazing, amazing guests here with us from the brand new movie, Fantasy Football, which I love, FYI, because I got to see it a little early. Give it up for Marseille Martin and Anton Cropper. Okay, so you are the director of yep. the movie, yep. and you are the producer of the movie and the star. Mm -hmm. Please be clear. Is that a lot of work for you to do both? Um, yeah. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it actually is, but... Uh... Good thing that I was more in like the pre-production process mm -hmm. and tried to be as hands-on as I could be and was more present there. Um, so I could focus on the acting aspect and the whole dynamic of how Callie um, is portrayed after, you know, we started filming. Back right. In April. So it was, you know, it was pretty difficult for sure. But I feel like when you are confident enough to use your voice in different areas, I think it can be easy going. So. Yeah, I read somewhere that originally the lead was supposed to be a boy. Yeah. Okay, so what made y'all say, no, 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 it's going to make more sense for it to be a girl? Well, you know, it wasn't us. It was Spring Hill that brought, brought it to us and was like, okay, so it was a father-son film, but we want to make it into a father-daughter. And it just kind of felt right. And I was attached to it as a uh, producer at first. Mm -hmm. And I was only reading it just to see if I was wanting to be attached to it as a in a producer standpoint but then when i when i looked through it and i saw like the true essence of how the family dynamic is and how action-packed and fun it felt i i wanted to uh give it a shot and see yeah. if i could play the daughter so. are you into football at all you know I'm not not <laughs> into football. Uh, you know, it, it took me a little bit to figure out Madden and, yeah. you know, the little simple uh, things when it comes to football. But my dad is a really big football fan. He loves the Las Vegas Raiders. He's obsessed That's with them. That's my team, too. Really? <laughs> yeah, I love the Raiders. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. Yes, no. So every time they have a game, like, we always go as a family to go to Vegas. I love that. So, yes. He, when, he was, uh, when he was producing this, he was really really into that part yeah you had me convinced with the madden i thought for sure that you was a pro gamer and knew how to bust down madden listen so. that's the beauty in acting baby. <laughs> beauty in acting but you know uh luckily we had a professional uh madden gamer on set okay shout out to bugs he, okay, he bugs. helped yes he helped out and was breaking it one by one um with the scenes and that, that was mainly for when i was just uh in my room when callie was in the room playing madden mm -hmm. uh, it was Really just me and him practicing. Anton, what about you? You you're a football fan by any chance? Let's go, Rams. <laughs> okay, so you a Rams fan. <laughs> yeah, I'm from LA, so I gotta represent. You know, we hadn't have a team we didn't have a team for twenty three years. So the moment they came back, you know, I had to uh, get back on board with them. Okay. Well something I noticed about you is you have like the gift of making a show get picked up, right? Uh. Because you have done so <laughs> many pilots for all the way from um of course you've done you worked with Blackish, which is mm -hmm. is that how you two know each other? Yes. Yes. For yeah. sure. Okay, so Blackish, which is super dope. You've done House of Lies, you've done Mixed Dish, you've done Suits, you a bunch of things that got picked up just from you doing even the pilot. Do you get a little offended when they're not calling you? You to do the whole rest of the season you're like hold on now nah, nah. you know how it works is you know and, and a lot of those shows you know some some of them i did the pilots on and some i i was executive producer and ran the shows and some i just come in and direct an episode yeah so it's really you know uh there's a beauty in doing pilots because you get to come in set the world up and then you know try to pass that on to the other directors that mm -hmm. come in and by not staying on the show full time, it frees me up to be able to do projects like, like this. this right. You know, where if I'm staying on, and I've, I've I've stayed on in both as executive producer on shows where I'm not there full time, and I've stayed there done shows where I am there full time. And again, it's a lot of responsibility and a lot of work, and and, and it takes me out of doing other pilots and again move, great movies like this. But mm -hmm. you did a really powerful episode on Blackish, and that's the Juneteenth episode, yes. and that was something I feel like we definitely need to highlight and should continue to because sometimes we're ignorant to even know what we should be celebrating because it's kind of, you know, we don't know the information, you mm -hmm. know? So when the information is put out there for us, especially in a form of a show where we all love, you wouldn't think that you will be getting certain lessons on, but you do. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. you know, what made you think to go that direction with the Juneteenth episode? Well, you know, um, I was very fortunate and blessed that, that, you know, Kenya, I've known Kenya since junior high and when the show first got when it first got picked up he called me and you know was super excited about it and you know said yo can you come do some episodes and at the time I was producing suits so I couldn't uh 
I think I didn't come into the second to last episode. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, there was a, a synergy immediately. And even though I was not a producer there full time, it always felt like family. And uh, it got to the point, I've, I've directed more Blackishes than anyone, um, which I, I take great pride in because it was such a special show. Uh, there we go. Uh, <laughs> hey. <laughs> You got the bell. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, uh, again, the Juneteenth episode was another one of those where, uh, you know, I, I, I did some of the more difficult blackishes, you know. Um, mm -hmm. And there was another one where we came in and, and, and between Kenya uh, Barris and Peter Saji, you know, they, they wanted to do something really special. And Juneteenth wasn't quite on the map the way it is now. Mm -hmm. And um, the cast came in. And the crazy part about that episode is that we started, it was the first episode of the season, and so the cast actually all came in a week early to rehearse. When we started, we, we, we put that whole thing together in five days. Wow. There was no music, mm -hmm. there was no songs written, there was no set built, any of that. And so they came in, and they were fantastic. I mean, they really put it down. They learned, you know, again, these songs weren't even written. We wrote them as we were prepping the show. That's and crazy. so they learned them, learned the choreography. Um, and uh, it, it just was really important to all of us that we knew we were making something special. That's still one of my proudest, proudest uh, things I've ever done is that episode. And we all knew it and we all, you know, everyone stepped up and put that extra effort in. That's and uh, yeah, you know, so it brought a lot of, rec I don't know if this is 100% factual, but I'm gonna say it. What I've heard though is that, um, you know, one of the things that happened is that uh, someone high up in Apple uh, watched the episode. Uh, I was told it was Tim Cook, but I'm not 100% sure. But someone high up in Apple watched the episode and didn't know about Juneteenth. Had mm -hmm. no, no, you know, a lot of people didn't. And that's how it got onto the iPhone as a holiday. Wow. So from that's watching the episode, so yeah. What? And then now that became obviously then international recognition. And people picked up their phones and said, what is this Juneteenth thing on here? So, you know, I often say, like, we may not be, you know, we, we what we do has an opportunity to impact the entire world, Look you know. At that. So, uh, you know, so that's a, a real proud moment for I think for all of us. Yeah, I love that story because sometimes they say nowadays you can't say anything because you're mm -hmm. going to get canceled. But I think sometimes it's the way you present things that need to get across to the world, and it will make an impact, just like you all did with that, and like you're doing every day in this industry from when you first did little like it's so <laughs> impressive and that's like one of my favorite movies and i'm really Aww. i'm gonna tell you why i'm upset with you guys you never made a home girl because i was trying to buy that listen but why didn't you do this <laughs> <laughs> okay oh my gosh uh home girl that that was that was great. That was a great that idea. That was really good. Did you and come it, up with that? It was, I think we wanted a Siri and we made it like, not really like a Siri Siri, but somebody to like kind of be somewhat of a narrator. Yeah. Um, Which is voiced by Tracy, surprisingly. Like really? not a lot of people know that. It, no. That was Tracy's, that was Tracy Ellis Ross. That was her no voice. No way. Yes. We I just asked knew. her. We were like, you want to do it? We were like, sure. So, um... I, girl, I don't know. That's a lot of, that's a lot of technology to go into it. I know, it. but I, I mean, we yes. need something for us. You yes, know what I'm but saying? we did mention that it wasn't in fantasy football, but we wanted it. We want Homegirl to kind of be placed in every. I love that genius. I project. love that. I yes. love that. So, so we thought about. And that. you just recently turned 18 years mm -hmm. old. Was that your first on-screen kiss, or did I miss one? Uh. <laughs> okay, these questions, girl. Uh, <laughs> these questions. Um, I pay well, attention. Okay. Um, I think yes. I think that was my first on screen kiss. I I did have one on Blackish, but we weren't kissing, and it was really awkward because <laughs> Anthony was there, and like it was supposed to be like a thing where I just sway my head back and forth or whatever. And it was just really weird. Like, oh my god. And I, but I was younger. But yes, that was my first on screen kiss. Yes. Was that awkward for you? Was that hard for you? Oh or? my god. We gonna get. <laughs> Yes. She going there. She going all the way. Like, was it hard? Yes, it was. Okay, it yeah. was hard for me because I was like, I had never done this on camera before. Uh -huh. And then it was literally eating me up inside every single day. Yeah. I was like, okay, 
I know this is coming, so it's it's all right. <laughs> um, but yeah, I told Anton how I felt about it, and I was <laughs> like, I'm not doing this over and over and over again. So, uh, but I think it was like, how many takes did we do? We only did a few. We, we just only did a, did a few. Like you know, always, he, always, always, so he was very yeah. like yeah. comforting in that space. I was and screaming. I, knew. I didn't think you were gonna do it. <laughs> really, no, my best friends. Okay, so they just went to the L.A. premiere. Yeah, and my best friends. <laughs> okay, only one of my friends knew, but everybody else was like, whoa, whoa, who knew? When was that? Yes. It was so funny. Oh I'm my gosh. Miles you. was there and yeah. he was like, yo, <laughs> when did you do that? It was funny. Because I know we all feel like you're like our little cousin or something. We watch you grow up. Yeah. And I've always took to you on the show because I have a smart mouth. So you, <laughs> <laughs> so on Black as you was always my favorite. So when I see you growing up and I'm just like, oh, she's about to kiss. I almost had a heart attack, okay? <laughs> oh, like I really? felt like, yes. Oh, my goodness. It's, but I, when, when you tell I was like, oh, yay. It, was, <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't terrible. It no, was, it no, was it was cool. sweet. It was yes. sweet. Another thing people were talking about, you and the Fenty savage mm-hmm. show you did your thing you look beautiful you. and some people were like okay well she's 18 should she be dressing like this mind you half of the models in there probably 17 18 years old as well models pretty much come up at a young age well you know surprisingly i was i was the youngest one there Ooh, i was so 18. what was you doing in that outfit no, <laughs> no, I'm no, 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 no I'm I'm we all know it was a sport wear. it was fenty sport yeah um but you know i had a good time i feel like like not every day you get a offer from Rihanna wanting to be you know in the show Ooh. so I felt like it was a great opportunity for me and I like look I'm not dumb I would yeah. never put myself in a situation where I would feel exposed or it is against anything that uh I, I'm all about so no I mean it was it was lots of fun and I think that's all that matters at the end of the day yeah. you know and I'm going to constantly grow up I that's, know that's, right. that's life and I mean I, I feel with a guy girl everybody 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 <laughs> aunties everybody so you know it, it is it is what it is and uh I think just the only difference is I'm growing up in, just in the public eye. Mm-hmm. So I think there, there's a lot of pressure to that. But I, I have a great support system. My parents are the best. And um, so are my friends. And they always support me. You know, it is what it is at the end of the day. I so. think we can see that you definitely have an amazing support system. And this movie is amazing. You did your thing in it, as always. I, I mean, I have nothing bad to say about the movie. Everybody right, needs let's to. let's go. You should yeah. ding that bell for that one yeah. right there. Yeah. Come on. The bad, right. when I there's not one bad thing that I could say and it was I enjoyed it and the crazier part is when I got the screener I didn't link it to my TV so I sat and watched it on my phone interrupted I didn't answer any phone calls so that says a lot because I have like ADD I'll be looking over here and here Uh looking at text messages Instagram but no the whole thing and I did see you get slimed yes Uh, how many takes did you get slimed on just Lord. one? Just one. Did you say, oh, I'm only doing one? Or? No. Oh, like you ain't the, got no it choice. It was slime. <laughs> like, it was actual, authentic slime. Of yeah. course, we have Nickelodeon a part of this, so right. they wanted to make it feel real. And that was the last scene of the day. Uh-huh. So, you know, after we got slime, we were wrapped. How long did it take you to get that slime up out of you okay, okay, <laughs> and okay. off of you? Let me think. Uh, okay, I definitely took like a two-hour shower <laughs> when I got real? back. Yeah, because my hands were stained. Yeah. My green hands were stained, but it wasn't... It wasn't too long, but it and took And that's a the first time you got slime. Ever, yeah. First really? time. Really? I yes. would have thought that would have been at least a second. No, no. I, I think I've said no every time that it was offered. <laughs> so. I'm not sure if she had more anxiety about the kiss or getting slimed. Uh-oh. You know, no, no. <laughs> I was nervous for both. I was like, okay, I don't know how this is going to feel. Uh-huh. It was weird. So what's next for you? Ooh. The both of you. What's next for the both of you? Oh mm. my goodness! You want to go first, <laughs> Mister uh, Booked and Busy? Come <laughs> no, on, Mister Booked know, and Busy. This is the first time in a long time um, where I I have not I've intentionally not filled my schedule. You know, mm-hmm. I have a couple things. I have a couple IPs that I have. A couple things in development always. Um, you know, really waiting for that next right project. Mm-hmm. Really, that's what it's sometimes about is just reading scripts, going through, having meetings, and just figuring out what the next thing is after this. And, you know, obviously want to build. Um, this movie was so so fantastic to make and, and just such a, a just a, a wonderful blessing overall and just want to build off of that and, you know, and, and, and not in a hurry. But, yeah. uh, you know, want to do some good and figure out something else to do with Marseille because that's always, that's always a win, you know what I'm saying? So, with, with the project I've seen, it's giving Dream Team. So yes. I could definitely see that 
How about you, Marseille? Oh, my goodness. I think I'm on the same boat as Anton. Um, you know, it's the holidays, so I kind of want to keep it, like, smooth and just uh, spend time with my family for sure because this whole year has been just back and forth of mm -hmm. working and just traveling a lot. a lot. It's been a lot. Yeah, it's been it's right. been crazy this year, so I kind of want to, like, end the year off with just some peace and yeah. just relaxation. Yep. Um, but, yeah, I definitely have some projects, especially for Genius. Um, as a producer, I have Saturdays coming up that's on Disney Channel that I'm not a part of, but it is just such a fun family show and of course we have golden brooks we have uh omar gooding mm -hmm. as the parents and we are just bringing in new talent always so that's amazing i think that comes out early uh 2023 and then we have step monster which is a great lionsgate project and it's all the above so i i'm i'm it's still like i'm busy. taking a break and then name 16 yeah, yeah, yeah. that's pretty much <laughs> it that's, that's her though you know she's like she's like I yeah i'm not that. doing anything yeah. right now no, but I these 17 projects that are all <laughs> happening at once Plus the other fifteen that are waiting over here. Yeah, but. Exactly. so you know, I, I kind of like to keep it uh, keep it smooth, and whatever happens, happens. You know, yeah. things things yeah. constantly change, if, especially in the industry that we're in. So, you know, taking it one step at a time. Well, yeah. Will you continue to partner with LeBron James? Because I know he also was a produ executive producer, correct, mm -hmm. on, on this yep. project. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that maybe uh, you all, all three of you, will be working together on so soon? Um. <laughs> Anything is possible, you know. I mean, there's a couple. We're 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 talking about a couple projects, yeah. um, you know. And I, you know, whether it's all of us or whether it's them in Marseille may do some or we may do something or whatever, you know, who knows? Yeah, um, knows. But but it. I mean, for me, I think I would definitely do it again. You know, with Spring Hill, with Genius, um, they're great partners to work with. And uh, yeah, so you know, again, you know, there's a lot of things in in in, in discussions, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, we'll see what happens. One last question, streaming versus coming out in theaters. What do you feel like is the better effect right now? Because I feel like when I was younger, movie theaters was a thing. I'm now, so glad you're, you're asking this yeah. question. Um, streaming is where I don't think anybody really knows because, of course, theater just feels more like big and right. just, of course, it's theatrical. So you, you kind of feel more special in that way. And yes, it's still like a big deal, of course, if you have Marvel and those type of big uh big uh, productions but i mean i would say everyone is at home we've been at home it's since true. the pandemic that's where <laughs> that's where the money's at that's where, that's where the stream's at and i think that's just how how it's really supposed to be if you if you're watching everything is coming into your home it is it doesn't matter in any aspect that's just what it is and i think that's just where it's supposed to be right now i mean yeah. There's always periods of times in, in the years where things co are constantly changing, yeah. you know? And I think the pandemic really switched how we live and the places that we want to go and what we find comfortable. And I think streaming was a really big part of that. So um, I, I'm very grateful to be able to be working with Paramount Plus on mm -hmm. this and them to be putting out a really amazing platform. And especially if we want to get, like, the big, big stuff, we have NFL and EA Sports a part of it to making more realistic and um, yeah I I think that's me though that's yeah. me though I mean I have so. to I have to agree in in the sense of you know what's beautiful and what's beautiful about this film is it really is you know by design to be watched you know yeah you can watch it by yourself and still yeah. enjoy it, you know as mm -hmm. you did you know and, and and it will captivate you and keep you but it's a family film you know mm -hmm. and really want this to be something that brings people together and yeah you can do that in the theater but there's something nice as Marseille was saying there's something nice about being in the comfort of your own home and being able to sit down with the people you love with your friends That's the right. people you care about and all have that sort of interaction in a in a very comfortable environment um i will say i do think that there's still something to be said about theatrical release and what I think what I hope the new model is is that I think in the future you'll start seeing theatrical releases for more films that then will immediately go to streaming so the theatrical okay. release almost becomes as Marseille said it becomes a much bigger deal and a bigger mm -hmm. presentation mm -hmm. so that actually becomes part of the marketing element so, for like so you get the buzz only. exactly right. you get no, the buzz they, you get the premiere they're still doing that like yeah. it's just and then, now boom, happening come out on streaming and you know i'm happy though like she said i'm happy we're on paramount plus they've been great and they're um you know they're 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 bringing this out on the perfect date thanksgiving you know uh uh you know it's perfect coming date. out yeah there mm -hmm. you go so all through the holidays through christmas through everything you know you can really enjoy it. And, and this is 
I'm not just saying this because, you know, I've, I've seen the movie a hundred times. You know, mm-hmm. I've been, I, you know, she has too. You know, we go through it <laughs> step by step and, you know, we make the changes until it's the final product. I still sit there and watch it and smile when I'm supposed to smile, mm-hmm. laugh when I'm supposed to laugh, get pulled in. And I think, I think you know, and you've seen it, so maybe you can attest to it. I don't think this is a movie you just watch once. No, right. this definitely is not one of those movies. This movie will be around for a long time, and you can see it on Paramount Plus this Friday after you you're eating with your family. You know, bring your leftovers in mm-hmm. front of the TV, warm them up, and make sure y'all get into fantasy football, which is going to be a big, big deal. It's a big deal already. Nice. Shout out to y'all for making an amazing film. Uh, we gonna make some noise for y'all on the Morning Woo! Hustle show. Right, let's go. Thank you. Let's Thank go. You. We are the Morning Hustle.